Algebra is easy, part one, and we're on page eight, multiplying and dividing numbers and variables. So the symbols, if you have a star or a little asterisk, a dot, an X, or a number and then parentheses times another number, these all symbol, symbolize multiplication. So if you see three star four, three dot four, three X four, or three parentheses four, these are all saying three times four, which we know is 12. Now, if you have a variable times a number, it ends up just being the number times the variable sitting next to each other. So five times a in any of these situations is just going to be five a. That same applies with um, different variables multiplied times each other. So if we have x times y, as we were showing here, x times y is just xy. It cannot be further simplified. So that's a note here. Um, we have further examples in multiplication as well, but anytime you're multiplying or dividing a number by a variable, just a variable, like in this case, 5 times a, it's just 5a. Or 200 times y is just 200y. And the same here, if we have 10 divided by x, that's just 10 over x. Or x divided by 12, that's just x over 12. We can't do anything further with that unless we actually have a value to put in for these variables, which in this case we don't. We're just simplifying. So that's as simple as it gets. So here we have a few more examples, D, E, and F. 10 divided by 2 or 10 fraction line 2. So this is just to show you that a fraction and the division sign are the same thing. They both imply the exact same thing. So if you have 10 divided by 2 or 10 over 2, those both are going to equal 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Just as the rule is with multiplication, 5 times a is 5a. Well, if we have 8 divided by x, that's just 8 over x. That's how we'd symbolize that. We can't simplify it any further. And the same with f. When we had x times y, it's just xy. But if um, and then the same is true for division. If we have x divided by y, it's just x over y is how we're going to symbolize that. So now let's talk about the sign and how we tell if it's positive or negative. So if we're multiplying and dividing numbers and variables, how do we tell whether the answer is positive or negative? This symbol here is very helpful. It seems kind of silly, but if you just draw this on your test or on your homework, it's really going to help you a lot if you have difficulty with uh, determining the sign of the answer. So let's look at example H. That's down here. We have negative 3 times 5. So negative 3 times positive 5. So what you do here is you cover one positive and one negative because we have a negative and a positive. So I cover a negative and a positive. My answer is negative. So we can see that's what I did here. I covered the negative and I covered the positive. So we can see that the answer is going to be negative. 3 times 5 is 15, so the answer is negative 15. So now let's look at these other examples here. <clears throat> G, negative 3 times negative 5. So if I have a negative times a negative, my answer is going to be positive. So negative 3 times negative 5 equals positive 15. One more time as a quick review, negative 3 times positive 5 negative 3, positive 5, my answer is negative 15. Now what about negative 3 times y? That's just going to be negative 3y, just as our example from the beginning in example b, 5 times a is just 5a. So negative 3 times y is negative 3y. Now what about this one here, negative 3 times negative y? Well, the signs are the same. same or in just in the, uh, this one I didn't go over that. Negative 3 times positive y will make negative 3y. Sorry about that. And then for j, negative 3 times negative y makes positive 3y. Okay. K, negative 20 divided by negative 10. So this symbol applies for multiplication and division. So we have negative times a negative equals a positive. 20 divided by 10 is 2. So negative 20 divided by negative 10 is positive 2. What about this one? This is kind of tiny, but it says negative 20 divided by 10. So negative 20, positive 10, my answer is going to be negative 2. Example N, 
negative 20 divided by positive y, so negative 20 positive y is going to leave me with negative 20 over y. Here we have negative 20 over negative y, so negative 20 negative y makes positive 20 over y. And again, we can't simplify it any further, so that's going to be our answer. So when you have um, quite a few negatives being multiplied by each other, you can keep this in mind. An even number of negatives will make a positive answer. So anytime you multiply a negative times a negative, it makes a positive. So that's two negative numbers. So anytime you have a multiple of two negative numbers, you're going to get a positive answer. So negative three times, I'm sorry, negative five times negative three equals positive 15. Positive 15, if we group this, I'm going to say this is positive 15, and then negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So this is positive 2. So positive 15 times positive 2 equals positive 30. So anytime there's an even number of negatives, this is four negatives here, makes a positive answer always. So just as an even number makes positive, an odd number of negatives will make a negative answer. So here we have three as an example. It ends up being negative six. So if we had three, if we had five, seven, nine, any odd number of negatives being multiplied times each other, you will end up with a negative answer. Okay, so let's look at some practice problems. So we're multiplying and dividing numbers and variables. So I'm going to make my little sketch here. So negative 5 times negative 8. Negative times negative is positive. So this is a positive 40. I know 5 times 8 is 40. Negative 4 times positive 9. So negative times positive equals negative. So I know my answer is negative. 4 times 9 is 36. Okay, positive 10 times negative 5. Positive times negative is negative. 10 times 5 is 50. These are nice and easy. Positive times positive is, of course, positive. So that's just going to be positive 9. Okay, so now we have a row of negatives. This is an even number of negatives, so I know my answer is going to be positive. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Now we have an odd number of negatives. So I know my answer is going to be negative. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 equals 27. OK, now number 7 is negative 7 times y. That's a negative times a positive. So that's going to be a negative. And of course, we just write 7y because we can't simplify it any further unless we have a value for y, which we do not. Awesome. Okay, now let's look at some division problems, beginning with number one over here. Same rule applies using this. So negative 10 divided by positive 5 equals negative. I know 10 divided by 5 is 2, so my answer is negative 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 3. Negative and negative makes a positive. Oops, sorry, I'm covering it. Positive answer. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 4. So positive 12, positive 4 equals a positive answer. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. Negative 100 divided by positive 10. Negative and positive makes a negative. 100 divided by 10 is 10. Number 5, negative 20 divided by negative 2. I'm sorry, positive 20 divided by negative 2, excuse me. So positive and negative makes a negative. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Negative 50 divided by negative 2. So negative and negative makes a positive. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Okay, then our last one we have negative 16 divided by positive y. So negative 16, positive y makes a negative. And again, we just show this as 16 over y because we cannot simplify it any further. We're just rewriting it. 
16 over y. All right, stay tuned for our next video, page 10, order of operations.